Welcome back to Crania Family Vlog. This is day six. Si day six. Six. Yep, this finger. Let's use that finger. We're on day six of Crania Synestosis Awareness Month. And today we are answering the question, what are some of the negative effects of untreated cranio? So basically, what happens if you do not undergo this surgery or, or treatment after your child is diagnosed? We'll see you on the other side. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another day of Craniofacial Awareness Month. Here at Cranio Family Vlogs, we are tackling a question every single day based on a long list of questions that we most often get asked about our daughter who has craniosynostosis. Today we're going to talk about what happens if surgery is needed for craniosynostosis and it is not done. What are some of the ramifications of that? It's important to note that not every case of craniosynostosis requires surgery. That determination is best left up to the doctors and professionals who get paid a lot more money than we do to make that decision because they know exactly what they're doing. Right out of the gate, the most obvious thing that's going to happen is that for the rest of that person's life, their head shape is going to be permanently different than others. And I'm not just talking a little different. Craniosynostosis uh, by being the premature fusion and as we discussed previously the brain will grow where it needs to grow and it will expand where it can because it will make room it will cause the head shape to drastically change and be drastically different than those of that person's peers this also means that things that may be very minor when that person is a child such as slightly offset eyes or lower set ears or slightly higher arched palate may get much more worse as that person ages. So this is going to change their ability to speak, how well they hear, how well they see, and just give them an all-around completely different general appearance. And this obviously affects how they can interact with people around them, with friends, with family, uh, with strangers, anybody around. If you're not able to to see, to hear, to speak, to feel, every time you have um, some level of disability, it hinders what you, 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 there's that level of obstacle that you're able, you're, you're needing to, to surmount in order to accomplish everything you want to in life. And in, in just compounding those elements, having, having, having none of them treated as you get older, they have a tendency to get worse and even more displaced. And, um, uh, basically what you see with within a baby and in your child will eventually just get get worse as an adult. As these changes happen and as that person ages, you know, with all of these things going on, with the way that they look, with the way that they may sound or how hard of hearing they are or whether or not they can see as well, that's just going to cause more social isol isolation as well as be a lot of early markers for depression. So that's why it's so important that if you think that your child has something that is related to cranio, get it checked out by your children's physician uh, or your pediatrician. Uh, there's something that we heard very early on when it came time for our daughter's very first surgery that actually was more reassuring than I think we gave it credit. That there's never something wrong if a parent thinks there is something wrong and they seek help. There's only something wrong if that parent doesn't do anything. If you have those concerns, um, bring them up with your pediatrician. It, it, it's still a very, um, very common that we hear pediatricians just don't think to, to look for cranio actively. And so if you think there is something wrong with the shape, with the, the, the development of your, your child's head, bring that up as a very specific concern and, and, and voice it. Um, Many pediatricians will will take, the good ones should take your concerns seriously and if they don't have a ready response with, um, uh, with the procedure of what to do at that point, they will refer you to a specialist and ultimately there should be a craniofacial team um, somewhere within your area uh, that would make the, the best decisions for your child regarding cranium. Now on top of all these other things, again it's very important to remember that 
this is in cases where surgery should be done. There are a lot of cases where surgery isn't needed because the child will actually grow out of it and that's not uncommon and it's not unheard of. So listen carefully with your doctors. However, the last thing that we want to talk about that would happen if a surgery is needed and it goes untreated is actually probably the most serious uh, when it comes to long-term effects and that is increased intracranial pressure. So again, as as the brain tries to grow, it will grow where it has to, and there will come a point where the brain will not be able to grow as much or as fast as it should be able to. And that causes the pressure around the brain to increase, and that pressure is called intracranial pressure. And when that goes up, there's a long list of things that happen, and we want to talk about those. So here's a list that we pulled off of Mayo Clinic about craniosynostosis and what happens with increased intracranial pressure. Some of the things that that causes are developmental delays, cognitive impairment, no energy or interest, also known as lethargy, blindness, eye movement disorders, seizures, death in rare instances. It's a very humbling and sobering statistic to know that if our daughter were born 30, 40, 50 years ago, that she might not have made it to her second birthday because of the advancements in medicine due to these things because of the increased intracranial pressure. The types of surgeries that are being done now have greatly improved quality of life for almost everyone who has to go through them. Specifically for those who have multiple sutures in the skull that are affected. Um, one uh, very basic uh, way to tell um, the severity is how much fusion you have within one suture or, or a full suture or multiple sutures. The more that is fused ahead of time, before it should be, um, there's much more likelihood that there will be, be issues along the line if there isn't some procedure done to offset that. Well, we've done it again. In less time than it takes for you to make a box of macaroni and cheese when you got a toddler running around, We've taught you a little bit more about the world of craniosynostosis. Today, we've talked about how when surgery is needed and is not completed, there runs a risk of permanent physical deformity, low self-esteem, as well as increased intracranial pressure. So with that, we thank you for stopping by. We look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. And if you want to learn more about us, head over to craniofamilyblog.com and check out the last five plus years of our history of being parents of a child with craniosynostosis. We'll see you next time.